so I was watching the Apple conference on my Android phone, as you do, and I saw this. <laughs> I'm not trying to get copyright, okay? Essentially, I saw an effect that I thought, hmm, that's pretty interesting. And it's this effect here, this effect here. And it's very short. It's a very, very short clip. But I thought, hmm, it's pretty interesting. Let me try and recreate that. So that's exactly what I did. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I recreated it and my exact process to recreating that clip. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our clip. So this is the clip that I want to be using. And I'm just going to cut to where I want the effect to start. So for me, I want it to start around here when he moves his head up. So I'm going to cut the clip. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve. So if we go all the way down here and we click Fusion, you can see that we're now in a new Fusion tab. Now what we're going to need to do essentially is we're tracking the footage. We're going to track just his face, then we're going to stabilize it and then zoom into the tracked image. So let's walk through it step by step. The first thing you're going to need to do is track the footage. So how are we going to do this? All you need to do is click onto the first node, this media in node, then press control and spacebar. That's going to open up a window. And this window shows all of the tools within DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. The tool we're going to need is a tracker, a planar tracker. So type in tracker or planar tracker, it's up to you. And then you'll see it here as a tool. Double click onto it and then click add. And you can see it automatically links the tracker to the media in node. So the media in node is what you're putting in. The media out node is what is coming out. So you can see that in between that is the planar tracker. So you're putting in footage, you're tracking the footage, and it's going out into the final output, right? Makes sense. Great. Next, what we need to do is click onto the planar tracker and then go to the right hand side here. And you see it says operation mode. Make sure that's on track. And then go to the beginning of your clip. Make sure you're at the beginning, this is important. And then hit set for the reference time. This is going to make sure that the track is going to start wherever this set point in the reference time is. So if you click set and your point in the video is halfway, it's going to start the track from halfway, right? That's the reference that it's going to use. So make sure it's at the beginning of the clip or the start of wherever you want the effect to be. So for me, that's at the beginning. So I'm going to press set. I'm going to leave the tracker to point. There's two different trackers. There's point and there's hybrid and point. It's going to depend on the footage that you use try and use them individually to see which one works best with your footage i've already tracked this so i know for a fact that point is enough because essentially i'm going to be tracking the features of the face and it's going to be easy for the tracker to pick it up so i'm just going to use point i'm then also going to change the motion type to translation and rotation right because i know he's going to be rotating his head a little bit and there's a little bit of movement, so I'm going to pick translation. I'm going to show you why I would only use translation in another clip, but for this, I know I'm going to use translation and rotation, so I'm going to click that. Hey, it's me from the future here. I'm just editing this video. I know the green screen looks a little bit janky. I'm sorry, I'll fix it for next time. Okay, so after you've selected the motion tab, what you need to do is draw the points to which you want to isolate and track towards the image. So for me, I'm going to draw his facial features. So make sure you're selected onto the plane of tracker node. And then just select around the area you want to track. This is important. Isolate the area which you want to focus and track onto. So for me, it's going to be his face. I'm going to make sure I can just get a lot of the features which will probably be best to track. Tracking works best with high contrast areas. So you see I've got his eyebrows, I've got his eyelashes, his nose, his face, his facial, facial hair. Um, so let's start tracking and then see what happens. So to start your track, we're going to go down here and we're going to click this one here, this tool, which is the track to end. And essentially it's going to start wherever you set your reference point, your reference time, and it's going to track forward until the end of the clip. So let's get started and see what happens. As you can see, it's tracking pretty well. It's collected all of the points from his face and it's, <laughs> it's very impressive. Resolve is sensational. And we seem to be good. We haven't lost many points. Done. And as you can see, it's tracked pretty well. You see all of these little marks? These are all keyframes. And these are all the keyframes that's created automatically for you. Okay, so now that we have this and the clip seems to be working pretty well, it's tracked very well. What I'm going to do is change the operation mode from track to stabilize. 
Yes, that simple. Track to stabilize and see what happens when I press play. As you can see, it's a bit laggy because I'm screen recording, but as you can see, it's actually stabilized the footage a lot and it's tracking towards his head. The movement which we specified is tracking that point. Now what we're gonna need to do though, is you can see these kind of edges around and that's not good because if we go back out into our timeline, you can see that you can see the edges around and that looks a little bit off. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either increase the size of the clip in Fusion, in the Fusion tab, or you can do it outside in the edit tab. So you can do it here if you wanted to. I personally like doing it within the Fusion tab. It's just much simpler that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control, I'm gonna click onto the play down node, press Control and Spacebar, I'm gonna initiate the search tool. Then I'm gonna type in transform and it's gonna add a transform node. Essentially what the transform node does is it will give you control over scale, rotation, pitch, your, you name it. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this way up like that. And we'll probably move it so it has more of a focus on his facial features. And if we go to the beginning, and play it. You can see it's working through. Well, this is the original clip on the left. This is what we're getting out. Yeah, that seems to work fine. I would recommend you to play throughout the whole way just to make sure that no edges are shown throughout the video. Then I'm going to go back to the edit tab and you can see you have the effect here. Now you're going to see this red line. Fusion is quite heavy and taxing on your system, depending on what system you have. So this line essentially is rendering out the footage. So you can potentially wait for this red line to go to blue and then you'll be able to play back a lot smoother. So I'm just going to wait until it goes to blue so you can play back smoother and then I'll show you the result. Okay, so as you can see now, it's finished, it's turned all blue. So now it's going to be our first time watching it back together. I'm going to press space bar and play it back and see what happens. It's gonna look like a crazy zoom into the effect, but that's fine, we'll manipulate that in a second. Bang. There we go, we've got the effect and it's looking. Mm, I could put different music to this, let me see. What music can I put to this? Yeah, pulling up. Just call me that touchy, ay, ay. How they want it? Tell them do not touch it, ay, ay. And if you wanted to emphasize the fact that it zooms in, because there's no way you can hide this, unless you have a high resolution camera and you're shooting something like 6K and you downscale to 4K or you're shooting 4K and downscale to 1080, there's no way you're going to get around this effect. And even then you'd have to film an extremely wide angle than normal. So when it does stabilize and punch in, you have a bit more latitude. But we haven't got that in this clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to emphasize this effect. So we can do this a few ways. The way I'm going to potentially do it is by using effects, open effects that come with GPU, accelerated open effects that come with DaVinci Resolve. And there's two ways you can use effects. I'll show you the first way. The first way is if you navigate to the top left corner, it says effects library, click onto that. And you'll see it says open effects right here. And you will have all of the effects that comes within DaVinci Resolve. I'm looking for the prism blur it's kind of like chromatic aberration a distortion kind of effect let me show you there if we go to the right hand side here if you don't see that click onto inspector and we'll open the side window where you can see the clip properties here it says open effects next to video and then bang you can see we have the prism blur that we've dragged onto here so whatever clip you use or whatever effect you use so say for example i use a blur it will always appear in the open effects if you apply your effects in the edit tab because there's another way to apply effects and I'll show you in a second. We're just going to use a prism blur. So I'm going to reduce the vignette sharpness. I'm going to take off blur strength. I don't want it to be blurred. Then we're going to play it back. You can see <laughs> we have this distortion chromatic aberration effect. So it just emphasizes the fact that something's happened. It's transitioned into something else or He's now immersed in the experience. I mean, he doesn't necessarily need it because it, it kind of works a riot, to be quite honest, luckily. But if you wanted to, you know, emphasize the effect, you could do that. Now, I mentioned that there's two ways to apply effects. The second way, there's actually three, but I'm only going to show you two. The second way is to go to the color tab at the bottom. So if we click the color tab, you'll see this window at the top right corner that says open effects. So if I click onto that, you have all the same controls which you, which you had earlier in the edit page. So if I click prism blur, for example, and I drag it, this time you have to drag it onto this node, the first color node. You can see that we have the effects now and I can adjust the parameters the same as before. The reason why you might want to do this in a color tab, I know you're probably asking why, why, you, why are there two ways? Well, you might want to do it in a color tab because you have all of the controls of the color tab. So that's masking. So say for example, we only wanted 
the background. We only wanted the background to have this chromatic aberration effect. What I could do is I can navigate to the masking tools, which are at the bottom here, select onto the pen tool, and I can just very, very briefly, very vaguely draw around and mask the subject. Bang. Now you can see that only he is selected with the effect. You might not be able to see, so I'm going to I'm going to go crazy and emphasize this effect by like a lot. Okay, so now you can see that only he's being affected by it. But we don't want that. We want the background to be affected by it. So what do we do? We invert it. So the invert button is right here. You click this and it's going to invert everything. Now the background has the effect. If I go here, you can see that I can turn off the selection window, the power window. So we can see the effect. You can see it has these kind of hard edges. So what do we do? We feather it. So in this same window that we use the mask, on the right hand side, there's controls for feathering. So you can see it says soft, I'm going to increase the soft, I'm going to increase the inside and the outside. And now you see we have a more seamless blending effect. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to, I'm going to put back on the power window, bang. Okay, so you can see the effect, the mask, the red lines outside of the mask, if I draw something you can see. Great. I'm going to turn it back off and we're just going to play it back so you can see. So this is why you might want to do the effects within, say, the color page instead of the edit page because you have way more controls. Then if I wanted to, I can grade this clip. I can use my presets. Link in the description if you want to get my presets. Yes, yes, yes. I can use my presets to color it or I can add some color grades and awesome effects. I can do some other things. But yeah, that's why you may want to use effects in the color page. Let's get back out. Let's see what we've got. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. I think it looks good. Now, this is actually technically the same method used for the stabilization effects from the Beats by Dre advert. And we have this kind of thing, this effect here. So I'm just going to show you the fact. I'm going to show you again real quick. If all you wanted to see was the last effect, great. End the video here. Thank you for watching. Don't subscribe. But if you want to see me do it one more time really quickly, then continue watching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this clip. This clip is here. This is what the original clip looks like. It's not bad. Not bad at all. But if you want to get the effects we have here, let me show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is click onto the clip. Remember, click onto the clip. Navigate to the bottom. Fusion tab. We're now in the Fusion tab. I'm going to select onto our first node. Right? Selecting onto the first node. Control. Space. That selects up the selection tool. It gives you all of the menus, all of the effects. Then remember what we type in? Tracker or planar tracker. Click add. It's going to add the planar tracker into our footage. Then we're going to navigate towards the first frame because that's where we want the stabilization effect to start. And I'm going to press set to set a reference time because we want it to start the tracking at the reference point, which is at the beginning of the video. Now I'm going to change the tracker to point and hybrid area because I know for a fact point isn't going to work with this. Then I'm going to go to motion type and I'm going to, I'm going to change it from perspective to translation because she's moving forward. There's no sort of rotation in this clip. So I'm just going to keep it to translation and the clip doesn't like increase in size. So there's no scale, leave it to translation. Then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to draw a mask around her face. Perfect. Then I'm going to track to the end and see what happens. So as you can see, ooh, it's tracking pretty well. It's mapping onto her facial features. And oh, we lost it a little bit at the end, but we should be okay. Next, go to operation mode, change it from track, stabilize, play it back. And what do we have? We have this. And it works well. Again, it's lagging because we're screen recording. Gonna press spacebar, control spacebar. I'm going to type in transform, add a transform node. I'm going to increase the size so it fills the frame. I'm going to reposition the clip and I'm going to wait for this red line to go blue so it renders out. Then I'm going to show you the result. Okay, so we finished and this is the effect that we've got. Yes, this is this is even better than the first one we've done. In fact, this was the first one I've done and this is the upgraded version. This is way better. And just to give you a reference point, this is the first clip. That's what it looks like before. Yeah, mediocre, satisfactory. And this is what we have after. Yes, creative, stylish, unique. 
So we've got that. Again, if we wanted to, we can add effects, we can color grade it, we can do all kinds of madness and craziness to it if we wanted to. But we're not, we're just going to leave it as it is for now. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, don't subscribe, but do comment and do share and do like the video. If you'd like me to make more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, then let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Peace.